Back in January, um, the EU realized that there was a, a pandemic crisis coming and it began to procure PPE. Um, but it wasn't until March uh, that we cottoned on. And on the 27th of March, the government opened up a public portal saying, look, um, we really need a lot of PPE. And many of us will remember quite how much heat there was on the government back then to uh, procure PPE. Healthcare workers were wearing ski goggles and dishwashing gloves yes, because they didn't have PPE. And basically what happened is the government went on a sort of £15 billion um, supermarket sweep uh, they bought up everything they could get their hands on um, from some very, including from some very odd counterparties and some very odd PPE. And what we've uncovered um, as one of four judicial review proceedings that we're bringing against government in relation to procurement around the pandemic is that one of those contracts, a contract for £252 million, was let, as lawyers say, was given to um, the vehicle of someone called Andrew Mills. And Andrew Mills is an interesting character because he set up a company called um, Prosper Mill, a mm. uh, pun I suspect that he finds less witty now than he did then, um, uh, for £100. And that £100 company was about to be given a £252 million contract for PPE. Uh, in fact, he asked for it to be placed with uh, a, a family fund company called Iander Capital, which is owned through a, uh, a tax haven in, in Mauritius. And, and um, we got some correspondence from government uh, a couple of days ago, in which government said that um, of the two types of mask that they'd bought, one for about 90 million quid and one for the other um, 160 million quid, um, the 160 million quid they spent on masks, they've spent on masks that even they now admit um, cannot be used in the NHS. 150 so million just, pounds. 150 million 160 pounds. million pounds 60 million. they spent on respirator masks. So these are the masks that um, doctors wear to protect themselves from um, others breathing out the virus. So these are not the masks that you and I are wearing when we go into a shop. They mm. spent 160 million quid or thereabouts on FFP2 masks, to give them their technical title. Um, but those masks only have ear loops and they're supposed to have head loops. Um, ear loops don't give a tight enough seal um, to stop you breathing in. Um, well, you can't, you can't adjust them. So unless you have a, 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 an optimal sized head, they're no use to you at all. Um, that is that is absolutely right. And the story's not much better, actually, with the other um, 90 million quid of masks. Those masks are sitting in a warehouse and government hasn't tested them yet. Um, so there's a there's a, an extraordinary story of public waste. So, so that's a total of 200, 252 million pound contract. for and, and the company that originally offered to, to supply at Prosper Mill, as you said, had been set up the previous year, but hadn't even filed any accounts at that point. Hadn't filed accounts, looked like it was a sort of business consultancy type company rather than a sort of dealer in PPE. No suggestion that it knew anything about PPE. No suggestion that I and that eventually did enter into the contract at Andrew Mills's request. Yes. Knew anything about PPE either. So, um, so I and is just a it's just a family investment company. It just it, it it's a privately held family investment company for the Horlick family. Right. Um, held through a tax haven. Mauritius is a sort of particularly grim tax haven. Um, and that's where um, Ianda was held through. OK. Um, I should add that Mr. Mills has, um, has said that he had been finalising his appointment as an advisor to Ianda when he made the offer, but, and I quote now, informed the health department of the intention to contract through Ianda as soon as he was in a position to do so, Mr. Horlick has said that he did not believe that Mr. Mills's role as a government advisor had any influence whatsoever on winning his contract. Mr. Mills has added that his position had no effect on the awarding of the contract. The spokesman for the Department of Health and Social Care told the Times last night that they were unable to comment because of ongoing legal proceedings. Jolly and Morm, you've, you've told this entire story without mentioning that Andrew Mills was a was a was a government advisor. He um, sat on the board of trade. Um, and the Board of Trade used to tell us who its advisors were, but um, uh, a couple of weeks after I started tweeting about Andrew Mills being an advisor to the Board of Trade, uh, the government took down 
its list that showed that Andrew Mills was an advisor. Um, you can still find it on the Wayback Machine, the web archive. Cash. It could be, I mean, a, coinc- that's, that's could be a coincidence. Odd. could be a coincidence, of course. And, and as I say, um, Messrs Horlick and Mills insist that his previous role advising the government had no influence whatsoever on, on the winning of the contract. So I know you're looking at other cases, and we'll talk again, I hope. What sort of criteria were in place i mean I, let me phrase it mischievously if if you and i had set up a company last year paid 100 quid to register it and then got onto this internet portal and offered to provide them with uh, i don't know a gazillion face masks what what sort of due diligence was being done on these offers as far as you can tell so far well the answer plainly is not enough hmm. um i mean i have spoken to um, a number of um, people who had no experience of supplying PPE and who months later found themselves chartering multiple 777s um, to bring PPE back from the uh, Far East, yes. typically around Malaysia where the rubber factories are, um, to the UK. So I spoke to someone who was involved in developing um, websites, for example. And the three companies we've sued, there's Ianda, which, as you mentioned, is a family fund. Mm. There's Pestfix, which is a pest control company. One of its websites is called pigeonstock.co.uk. Uh, and then there's uh, another big £108 million contract to a company called Clanboy, which is a sweets wholesaler in, in Northern Ireland. Apparently, they make very good sweets, but I'm not sure that qualifies them uh, as the appropriate place to place a £108 million PPE contract. Although, I suppose, it, it's, it's you know, the, the proof is in the pudding. Do you, and, and we should follow all of these cases with interest, do you, uh, is, there, is there, where does the buck stop? So, if I read you the first line of the Times, ministers have wasted at least £150 million. It packs a punch, but it, there's no names here. Who, where would the buck stop? Who would ultimately bear responsibility for, essentially, uh, as Boris Johnson would say, spaffing £150 million of our money up the wall? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a pretty good question. That's really a political question rather than a legal question. Is it? As I understand it, Um, Procurement, although being carried out by DHSC, by the Department of Health, by Matt Hancock's department, was actually being run from a PPE cell, C-E-L-L, in the cabinet office. Um, Right. And, um, you know, it's kind of of a a piece with a government that is very good at politics, um, but um, whose record on uh, delivery is certainly amenable of challenge. Well, as I say, we'll keep a very close eye on this story. It's strange that the Taxpayers' Alliance aren't up in arms, Jolly and Mom. You, you'd expect them to be galloping over the hill at any moment, wouldn't you, on a story like this? You, you would think that 156 to £177 million pounds of wasted public funds would attract the attention of somebody of an organisation that was uh, uh, interested in the proper use of taxpayers' funds. But, um, no, I, I, I do share your your your, your surprise. I, I also raise an eyebrow the same general direction. Oh, perhaps they're all furloughed.